you got to have walk-up music. And, uh, well, I don't have, like, uh, you know, any band to uh, warm up the crowd. Nobody's headlining for me. So it's Monday morning. I'm hoping just now the coffee's kicking in. You guys will enjoy this. But let's face facts. Monday morning, the last thing you guys want to hear about is cybersecurity, right? Okay, so who am I? My name is Kevin Seesock. I'm the CIO of OMAG. Uh, here to talk to you about cybersecurity awareness training. Who here knows what OMAG is? OMAG is El Reno's cyber insurer, amongst many other things. Um, essentially, we are a government entity made up of cities and towns. We are not an insurance company. I don't work for travelers. I don't get a bonus. But, you know, if you guys uh, don't have a claim, that's not how this works. I'm a government employee just like you guys. The difference is, is that we're out, we are out here trying to make sure you don't have a claim, but not because it has anything to do with the bottom line. It has everything to do with the fact that we know what it's like being in a city or town that gets hit by a virus. So the whole reason I'm out here is not to scare you, except it is very much to scare you. Now, I've got a couple of videos. You guys are going to see what it's like. Uh, some hacker or some attacker. We don't really like to use the word hacker anymore because it evokes uh, memories of really bad hacker movies from the 90s, like with Angelina Jolie. Anybody ever seen that one? It's terrible. But we're going to demonstrate that this is less about complicated technical stuff and firewalls and writing viruses and code this and encryption that. And it's more about social engineering. It's really easy in this day and age for a, an attacker to con anybody they want on the internet. And that's the goal of today is to get you guys to understand how much they're coming after you and how easy it is. So I invited a few of the world's best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my vulnerabilities are. And now I'm going to meet them in Las Vegas for DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year. They're going to hack me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. Do you want to do a sample of phishing call? What's phishing? Phishing is voice solicitation. And basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Will okay. you, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. Hi. I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, <laughs> my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan and we just had a baby and he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry. I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, Jessica gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Shh. Oh, I'm not on there either? I, so I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number 5127 to set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry, so there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed after this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Holy shit. So they, they, just gave, they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're going to have to go on and change your password now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. It is actually that easy. So this is a judgment-free zone, guys. I'm going to ask you guys to be honest with me when it comes to whether or not you've been hacked or what your experience has been. And I'm going to be honest with you too, because ultimately the IT guys can do everything. We buy the most expensive firewalls and antiviruses and 
spend godly amounts of time securing everything, servers, PCs, stuff like this. But none of that makes a lick of difference because the most insecure part of any network is us. Okay, so I'm gonna show this comic. For some reason, every cybersecurity awareness training has this same comic in it. It's very funny. Do we have anybody in the room named Dave? We did in the first session. So, don't be Dave. That's the one lesson you guys got to take away from today. Don't be Dave. We'll start with passwords a little bit. Passwords are a broken system. You guys, let's be realistic here. You guys reuse passwords across multiple sites? I do. I can't be the only one. Come on, I should see more hands. That's, that's a good point. You probably have over a hundred different accounts spread across various systems, websites, etc. Your bank, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix. You can't be expected to remember a hundred passwords. That's unrealistic. So we reuse them. I do it. Now, I'm, later on, I'm going to teach you some tricks on how not to do that. But the reality is, is that we, we have gotten into that habit. So here's my one dad joke for the whole thing, and I'm sorry, but I've got to do it. And it's another one of those. Passwords are like underwear. Don't share them with anyone. Don't reuse them and change them often. Okay, very funny. The particular part of this is don't reuse them. Now, what, what's the makeup of a good password? Let, let's start there. Um, you guys got any ideas? What do the systems make you do these days? Okay, so how do you remember that exactly? Do you have like a, a mnemonic in your head? Um, you have a list? Is it in Excel? Is it written on a piece of paper under your mouse pad? <laughs> I like to say the, these are examples of ways of which we're not secure. Um, do you use a password safe? Like a tool that encrypts them all? That's going to be one of our tips later on. Don't feel bad. Most people don't. The good news is passwords are hard to use. They're insecure. And all of those tips and tricks, uppercase, lowercase, et cetera, don't actually work. Computers have gotten so fast and so good that shorter passwords, even if they have all those things, are still crackable or hackable in seconds, minutes most. So what we have to start doing is using the technology against the attackers. And thankfully, there are a lot of tools, password safes. They'll suggest long passwords that are made up of nothing but garbage. And then since you can't remember that, fill it in for you. And it seems like it's more insecure that way, but it's not because it's all encrypted and there's a master password, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so that's passwords. Why are we talking about all of this? Now you guys think, okay, well, all right, who, who's had their uh, credit card hacked? That should be everybody. No, but you guys never had your credit card hacked? I have, I've had it happen twice. You go to pay for something anywhere, maybe it, uh, you handed it to the cashier. Who knows what they did with it when they disappeared into the back. The idea that credit card numbers are secure is silly these days, but it happens to everyone. And what do you do? You get on the phone with the bank, you talk to Bob in Utah, except uh, it doesn't sound like he's from Utah, and you get a new one, no big deal. Same thing with your Facebook. Anybody have like Facebook, personal account, maybe Amazon hacked? Netflix? My Netflix account was hacked about a year ago. Nothing? Am I the only one? They're only coming after me? Okay, so I, I get it now. You guys aren't going to be honest with me, except her. It's not just Facebook. It's not just your credit card. These are good examples of how it comes after you. But it's also happening in our cities and towns. Here on the left, 613 Ardmore Utility Services accounts hacked. That included personal information, credit monitoring, etc. This one on the right is my favorite out of any of them. The city of Enid 
back in 2016, their AP clerk sent $37,000 in taxpayer funds to an offshore account. $37,000 of city money was lost for forever and went to somebody, who knows. That's what we're trying to prevent. This is not just happening in the big cities. It's not just happening to big companies. It's not just Colonial Pipeline and City of Atlanta. It's here in Oklahoma, in your neighbors. And it could be this city of town next. Here's what they fell victim to. The attacker posed as the city manager. The attacker went out and registered a new domain name. So you guys have got uh, cityofalreno.gov, I think, .com. This attacker went out for City of Enid and registered, and it only costs about 10 bucks, cityofernid.com. If you're not paying close enough attention when you get the email, copy the same signature from the city manager. All that takes is five minutes worth of research. You too can fall victim to this. So $10 to register the account, five minutes worth of research on the city's website. Maybe check Facebook, you know, wait until the city manager's out of the office and then send the right email, the right words, make sure it's in good, you know, good English grammar. And this person made off with 37 grand. They are not the only one that this happened to. There was not a single technological clever hack. There was no, you know, firewall that was breached. There was none of this. All it was was social engineering. And it keeps happening. Stillwater, 3,000 utility payment accounts. A couple years back, city of Dallas, their tornado sirens started going off at about 2 a.m. Some kid thought it'd be funny to set those systems off when everybody was trying to sleep. Lo and behold, same systems are used here in Oklahoma, just not as big of a target. Here's the thing though, city of Dallas, city of Tulsa, which just got hit a few months ago, they're gonna start working to be better. So who are they gonna be coming after? The cities and towns that didn't have quite the same investment. They didn't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to pour into new cybersecurity systems and firewalls and backups and this, that, or the other. They're going to come after the targets that are small, that are just trying to do what they can with a small IT team, like ours at Omax, or yours, Zach. Lawton, 2018. What happened is they got a virus that cascaded through their city network and it took down everything. Utility payments, police, fire, the website, city hall, for two months. That city sent most of their staff home. This was before COVID, so this was wild. We had no idea that you, know, you could be shut down that long. They sent home all their staff for nearly two months while they had to rebuild everything. It is happening here, and it's happening to all of us. So. Yet another one of those examples where I'm going to ask you guys to be honest. And because I like to eat my own dog food, we're going to start with me. So this is a site called Have I Been Pwned? You have to forgive me. Hackers like to replace letters and be all cutesy. It, it's the whole, you know, hoodie wearing goofball hacker that we're used to from, you know, those horrible 90s movies. So. This is supposed to be owned. I don't know why they're being cute, but they are. This is actually a website you can use where you type in your email address or your phone number and figure out if somebody has actually leaked your data online. I know that sounds scary. I know that sounds like something you don't wanna do. You should actually go do this. And I'm gonna start with me just so you guys aren't quite so worried. And have I been pwned? See here, lo and behold, I have been pwned. You guys are gonna be sick of me saying that. So I was on a couple of marketing lists, uh, email address, job title, physical addresses, that's scary. Uh, Kobe, yeah, there's, uh, there's my physical address there. There's quite a few out there. 
all of these are databases that were hacked and sold on the dark web, containing millions of records, usernames, passwords, uh, sometimes social security numbers, credit card numbers, health information even. Anybody want to volunteer their email address? I guarantee you this is not being hacked. In fact, I actually suggest each and every one of you check your email address against this. It's like a credit check for your email address. It searches these databases and says, yeah, your email address is on one of those databases. It's already out there, can't make it worse. What you can do is figure out how you can make it better. What's your email address? M-E-M-E. -E. All right. You have been pwned. Uh, oh, I think you're one of the best I've seen. So I've never actually run across somebody unless they have a brand new email account, and it's usually very specific, who has not been pwned. You only have one, the site Canva. I actually use that site too. Um, and evidently they couldn't secure their systems, lost their database of usernames, uh, passwords, uh, email addresses, and geographic locations. So that's a password you should consider changing. Now that was easy, not scary at all, but that's a site you used, right? Yeah. And so you recognize that. Can we get another volunteer? J. J K I O. All right, let's check. You have been pwned. Oops. Uh, Apollo, that's the same one. Covey, same as me. Exactus, I think that's a marketing database. My Fitness Pal. Use My Fitness Pal. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, share this. Suffered a data breach. The last two sessions, uh, we had somebody with their LinkedIn account. And I use LinkedIn. LinkedIn gets hacked about eh, every six months, give or take. You notice how blase I sound about that. That's the unfortunate nature of the world we live in. Lady in the first class actually asked, should I just delete my, my LinkedIn account? I don't think so. We're not in a position anymore where we can just cancel all of our accounts, disconnect the internet, and go live in the woods somewhere. Our families are online, our friends. It's how we share recipes. We have to live online these days. So we'll talk about some of the tools we can use. I will tell you right now though, if your password is the same on all of these accounts, that's where they're gonna get you. Because that password on your LinkedIn, on your Canva, on your Kobe account, all of those are on the dark web already there. Okay, gotta go through a few technical details here. Some terminology, malware, this is what we've been talking about when it comes to viruses. That's gonna to connect to something here important in a minute. The attacker, again, I don't call them hackers anymore, that sounds like the 90s. Vulnerability. So a vulnerability can be in a system, like a computer, a piece of software, a server. It can be in a network. It can be something where somebody could just plug in. I'll tell you that there was a vulnerability I found this morning right here in this very building. I walked in that front door, door was unlocked, and you guys have got a server room right there. Door's wide open, not even locked, I poked my head in. That's a vulnerability. Now vulnerabilities can be a lot of things. They can be physical, no door locks or the doors are unlocked. They can be technological. There's a piece of software that the coders who wrote the software didn't do a very good job. Or it can be social can be stuff that you're doing. That's what we're here to talk about. That is the social engineering. That's the con man. Finally, encryption. Who here knows what encryption is? Is encryption a good thing or a bad thing? Take a guess. Good thing? Good thing. You guys think encryption's a good thing? Encryption is a tool just like any other. It is a good thing if you're protecting your own information. It's the reason why you can put your credit card in on Amazon and that data is secure as it travels across the internet to Amazon servers. 
It's also a bad thing when that encryption is used to scramble all the data on your computer. Who here's heard of ransomware? It's the one not on this list. Okay, we're starting to hear more about ransomware these days. The idea behind ransomware, and this is the important tool or important uh, tool that hackers are using these days that we need to know about, is it's basically a virus that uses encryption along with usually social engineering to scramble all of your files and all of your neighbor's files and their neighbor's files, and then they force you to pay Bitcoins a ransom. So you guys hear about this stuff on the, the nightly news. You guys turn on KFOR, they're talking about some company. Continental Pipeline. Remember that one just a few months ago? City of Tulsa. There's another Oklahoma one. These are all ransomware attacks. This is big business for hackers. Millions and millions of dollars. The Russian mafia, during one of the heydays of ransomware attacks back in about 2016, was raking in $80 million a month. And they're still doing it. Now, instead of just making money though, it's also a tool that's being used by governments. So, script kitties. These are these hoodie wearing, you know, goofballs that like to replace the P's and O's in words. We don't care too much about them. They like their pranks. Hacktivists, these are anonymous. You guys hear about them, the ones that are always trying to hack people, you know, just to, as a form of activism. Carters, these are people trying to steal credit cards. The big ones that we're starting to become worried about these days are governments. This is where World War III is going to be fought, is online. And it's not just they're going to lock up our computer with our, you know, pictures of grandma and the kids. I mean, that's certainly frustrating and annoying. But what if they're going after city governments? What if they're going after police evidence, uh, digital evidence lockers? What if they're going after critical infrastructure? And unfortunately, no matter what we do, technologically, antivirus, firewalls, proper network security, bolting the doors, there are still always the occasional Daves. And so, not just to protect us from the punk kid wearing the hoodie. And not just to protect us from the hacktivist who wants to make a statement. But we're talking about terrorist organizations that are taking money because we pay, have to pay the ransom and using that money to kill Americans. Not to put too fine a point on it, guys. This is the front in this war. And we're the ones who've got to defend. So that's why we're here talking. Now I mentioned critical infrastructure. Who here knows what critical infrastructure is? I had a room full of police officers, so probably. I mean, does anything here in the city of El Reno count as critical infrastructure? Life, property, wellness, Water, you guys do water, right? Water and wastewater systems. Your radios out there for both fire and police that so you can communicate with each other and go protect people. All of this stuff is digital and all of this stuff is hackable. So when we talk about critical infrastructure, we're not just talking about big pipelines like the Continental Pipeline. We're not talking about refineries. We are talking about those, but they are things that are here at home that you guys have the ability to help protect. So I wanna show you guys something, and unfortunately we probably don't have the time today to go into the dark web, but I do wanna show you something. It's not actually on the dark web. It's something called Shodan. Shodan is a website that scans the entire internet. And as it does it, it makes a note of everything that is unprotected, insecure, and unsafe. Now, I have an account on Shodan, and I realize I'm saying that in a room full of cops, so you guys wanna arrest me. The point being that I haven't done anything bad with it, 
by just getting access and trying to see what's out there. I'll give you a quick little story. A few months back, I was doing a research project. I'm also working on a master's in cybersecurity. And I hop on Shodan to do a short little paper and I find that the city of Stillwater, and I know their IT guys and their cybersecurity guy, city of Stillwater's got uh, one of their systems online. Their system looks, let's see here, quite a bit like this. It's a little different. Has to do with water. They, uh, they set up a system to inject uh, chemicals into like a park's water supply for the fountains to help kill off COVID. And when it was installed, there was a nice little jack there for uh, network. The guy installing it went, click, plugged it in. Why wouldn't you? It's the next step on his checklist. It's obviously got to be monitored. Let's plug it in. What he didn't do was tell anybody else. It shows up here where anybody, me, a good guy, or a few other people that might not be good guys can go see it. This site exists for the entire purpose of telling people these problems are out there. Now, what they do with it is up to them. I've seen particle accelerators on this site, like actual particle accelerators, like, you know, physics lab type stuff. <clears throat> now, thankfully, I have not seen anything from the city of El Reno. How did you decide to become a hacker? <laughs> well, I'm not really sure what it means to become a hacker. That's like some guy in a hoodie who types really fast and stays up all night writing code and cracking passwords. It's not me. I just spy on people and see what makes them click. It's not a bad job. Mark Hanning, CEO of Qualicart, said to report earnings after their blockbuster IP. So you consider this a job? I put a lot of work into this. I'm not lazy. It takes research to figure out the key players, learn all about them, their families, their friends, what they care about. You have to understand the company's organization. I get a lot of my information from the sales department because they're always so quick and eager. They're hungry. People trust too easily. They don't look at the details. I do. Details matter. That's what I'm good at. It has to look completely believable. It has to look familiar. This is where research is important. It's not some generic piece of spam. It's an email from their boss with their company's signature. It's written in the voice of the boss. It's what he would say if he were writing this. What about the malware itself? How does that work? Somebody else out there already wrote all the code that does the actual attack. I'm just using it in the attachment. My skill is in my ability to get a bunch of people to click on that attachment. I always wonder what it's like when the whole thing unfolds on their end, when the panic sets in. Please leave your message after the beep. Hey, this is Rajiv in finance. Call me as soon as you get this. Something's up with my laptop. I can't Katie, are you on your way to the office? Something's going on with our file uh, servers. The Karen and HR, our benefits dashboard seems really slow. We're getting calls from users on it. Get this. Apparently, there's a malware attack targeting our main... It's ransomware. They're holding us hostage. We're locked out of everything. I, I can't even check my phone. What about the backup? That will take days. We need this fixed now. Just pay it. We don't have a choice. We're reporting earnings in two hours. But how do we know Just that they'll... pay it. Put every single person on getting us back up and running. That's the only priority now. Okay, it's done. I have the decrypt key. Mark, we have a big problem. 
The ransomware was just to distract us. They got inside. They got everything. Customer data, financials, everything. Qualicart is reeling today from the news that hackers have released the personal information of nearly the 2 Nasdaq million The Nasdaq closed customers. lower today, led by Qualicart, which was down 14% on news that their recent data breach may be far worse than the company originally stock announced. fell to a new all-time low on news that CEO Mark Hanning is stepping down after what is turning out to be one of the worst breaches of personal information in recent history. Do you feel bad about releasing the personal information? All the financials? All the money that was lost? All I did was get the files. I'm not the one that decided to release them. I'm not the one that shorted the stock. Somebody else had their reasons for that. It's above my pay grade. I was paid to do a job and I did it well. And that's what's expected of anyone, isn't it? Anyway, markets bounce back. That number is out of date. We hit $1 billion in January. Did you guys see what she was doing there? Generating an email from, so in this mythical company of hers, it's uh, qualicart.com. She changed the email to be from qualcart, changed an I to an L so that nobody notices. Copied somebody else's email signature, same logo, same everything. Sent that to a bunch of internal staff that she figured out what positions they were in, what they did via LinkedIn, got connected to the CEO's wife on LinkedIn by pretending to be a former classmate. All of this is social engineering. And all of these techniques are being used to attack us. Okay, we'll, we'll go through a few examples here. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but it looks like Netflix email, okay. Um, so in our email here, we've got this really long, complicated uh, subject line. That doesn't look like something that Netflix would send. Uh, strange looking email subject. What about the from address? Uh, that's not Netflix. Okay, that's just from some guy. And you actually read the text and man, uh, please update your payment method for continue Netflix feature. Okay, well that one's obvious, right? That's just the stuff we delete. Everybody get these? Raise your hand if you get something like this. Should be everybody. Okay. Is this one real or fake? Amazon. Refund notification. You are required to provide us a valid billing address. Am I due a refund? Why would I be? Uh, wait, what was my last order? Uh, required, huh? Don't they already have my billing address? So this thought process you guys are seeing me go through is what we need to be doing every time we get an email that could be the slightest bit suspicious. Don't be Dave. We hope to see you again soon. That was the other one that, that tipped me off. I was like, I've never seen anybody from Amazon. This one's a favorite. We send these out as simulations to our staff at OMAG, Office 365, Microsoft. Everybody's got a Microsoft account, especially in an organization. Okay, well, gmarsh at noblesys.com is the uh, uh, from address. That's not, uh, that's not actually Microsoft. Um, hmm, my name's not user. Sounds unnecessarily scary. Man, they're trying to terrify me into clicking on that link, aren't they? Okay, this is my favorite. Because if you get an email from the IRS, your first thought should be, boy, I didn't know they even had email at the IRS. They can't be that advanced. They're at least 30 years behind. Okay, so they called me taxpayer. I know that the IRS doesn't have much of their crap together, but I know they know my name. On top of that, I don't think, I think I use TurboTax. Wouldn't I be getting an email from them? Finally, it says, thanks, IRS team. Pretty sure that the IRS isn't in the team building. Okay, those are all obvious, right? So what about this one? I want to point out a few things about this. MJ Barton at OML.org. Anybody know who OML is, right? We got a conference coming up in about a month with them. Be uh, downtown Oklahoma City. That's going to be a lot of fun. MJ Barton at OML.org is a real email address. 
And you guys can't see it from all the way back there, but there's no R, it's not City of Ernid. It's OML.org. It is their actual email domain. In addition to the fact that it is actually from OML, it has her signature block, the logo of the OML conference this year, the OML logo itself. That is even her LinkedIn. Keep in mind, real person, actual email address, not city of earned, OML.org. Correctly done, the actual one. Here's how this happened. MJ Barton's password got hacked. Somewhere out there, somebody got a hold of her password. And they actually logged into her email account, got into her address book, and started sending emails that looked like they were from her to people she knew. With a link on there that said view doc. And if you click on this link, it takes you to this page. And at this page, it asks you to sign in with one of your email addresses and passwords. You guys see where this is going. So let's say you go, oh, well, um, I got Yahoo. Click on Yahoo. You type in your Yahoo email address, you type in your Yahoo password, which you've reused across 150 sites. Guess what these people now have? That is not a legitimate site. That's a harvesting site that they're using to gather usernames and passwords. We've been receiving emails like this for over two weeks. I have dozens of them in our server. And they're now coming from cities and towns across the entire state because they're cascading through cities and towns this way. Because people aren't hovering over the link, they're typing in their username and password, and they're reusing that username and password everywhere. So here are the tips, or here are the tricks that they're using against us. They're trying to entice or terrify us. Now that last one, MJ, they didn't need to do much. It was more about trust. But on a lot of these, you know, the Netflix ones and whatnot, they're trying to scare us. Oh, our account's going to be locked. I, I can't go without my Netflix. Or we're going to win a lot of money. We're going to get a big refund from Amazon. Not going to happen. They're trying to go after our lizard brain. And yes, that is a real thing. So stop, think for just a second before you click, before you get scared, before you get excited, what is really going on here? They're trying to spoof and fake. This is the MJ Barton thing. Just because it's from a friend doesn't mean it's friendly. So what happened in this real scenario with MJ? One of our staff calls her up and says, MJ, you've been sending out emails with this view document? No, I haven't. When should that phone call have happened? Before you click the link or after? That one's a gimme. Before. If you're not expecting an email from MJ, call her up. Ask her, hey, are you sending out this stuff? Oh, no, no, that's weird. Oh, I think my account's been hacked. Bingo. You've just stopped it from escal escalating further. They want you to click and log in. Now they have your username and password. And they have your username and password for potentially dozens of sites. So don't click. If it's for Netflix, there's a problem with your account. Go to Netflix. Go, don't click on the link. Go to a web browser. Type in netflix.com and log in the way you always would. I know it's a hassle. It's a few more steps. You got to actually press the keys. And, you know, carpal tunnel's bad these days. I, I just type it in. You've already circumvented their link because it's not actually taking you to Netflix. And if it's an attachment, like we saw with that lady hacking, they're trying to get you to open it, infect it, and get across the entire network. Now, I'm going to speak for Zach here because, well, I know this is what he thinks because we all think this way. He and I would rather there be a line of people outside of our office doors asking to check every file that came in. Can you please scan this? It's just, I, I don't, it looks sketchy. I'm just not sure. You know what? Thank you for checking first. Ask first. It's always better for us to scan it and it be a false positive than for something to go wrong and it cascades through the whole network. So what can you do today? In addition to all the other things we've talked about, go to check if you've been pwned. I guarantee you, it's not as scary as it sounds. It might actually be scary about your account, but it gives you information you can use. 
Who here knows what two-factor authentication is? Sometimes referred to as multi-factor authentication. Okay, who here gets that text message from like your bank with a six digit code you gotta type in? You guys have all seen those, right? Pretty much every site these days has one of those. If your password is out there on the dark web for sale, and it probably is, and you can find that out by going to have I been pwned. If your password has been pwned, that multi-factor shuts it down. Somebody tries to log into your account and it sends you a text message, except it sends you a text message on your cell phone. It's called multi-factor authentication because it doesn't just require one thing or one factor. One of the factors is something you know, your password. Another factor is something you have, like your cell phone, or something you are, like your biometrics, you know, thumbprint, um, the facial recognition. Turn this stuff on and use it. I know, I know, especially when it comes to biometrics, you don't want Apple having a picture of your face. I get it. It's actually more secure that way. I'd rather Apple have it than the hacker. Finally, use a password safe program. Same type of deal. Everybody's cell phones these days have a tool built in that will offer to save your password for you. Not only that, it'll offer to generate a password for you. And when it does generate that password, it's a big long line of gobbledygook, right? You'll never remember that in a million years. But when it saves it, now you don't have to. It's unique for every site, so that way there's, you're not reusing it across websites, it saves it for you, and it protects it all with your biometrics. That's the new way it works. Turn that stuff on and start using it. Don't reuse your passwords. If you take nothing else away from this today, take that. So I told you a little bit about plugging stuff in, you know, those uh, water things. I wanna scare you one last time. Remind you guys why we're doing all this. You know, February 5th, uh, there was an unlawful intrusion into the city of Oldsmar computer system at its water treatment plant. Water systems, like other public utility systems, are part of the nation's critical infrastructure and can be vulnerable targets when someone desires to adversely affect public safety. On Friday morning at about 8 o'clock, a plant operator at the Oldsmar Water Treatment Facility noticed that someone remotely accessed the computer system that he was monitoring. This computer system controls the chemicals and other operations of the water treatment plant. The person remotely accessed the system for about three to five minutes, opening various functions on the screen. One of the functions opened by the person hacking into the system was one that controls the amount of sodium hydroxide in the water. The hacker changed the sodium hydroxide from about 100 parts per million to 11,100 parts per million. This is obviously a significant and potentially dangerous increase. Sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, is the main ingredient in liquid drain cleaners. It's also used to control water acidity and remove metals from drinking water in the water treatment plants. So this was in February. Oldsmar, Florida is a town about like any other. Very similar in many ways to El Reno. Have a electronically controlled water treatment plants and the ability to change these settings. Now, thankfully, in Oldsmar, the operator was watching the screen and saw the guy do it. What did he do? He changed it back and then immediately alerted his supervisor, who alerted his supervisor, who contacted law enforcement, who contacted the FBI. Everything went according to plan. But the guy was watching the screen. It happened on a Friday during business hours. Not at midnight or on a weekend, but what if it had? This is why we're doing the whole say something, see, some, or see something, say something mentality. We're not just trying to drill it into you about passwords and don't click and this, that, or the other. You guys need to accept responsibility for your portion of the world and promote a cybersecurity culture in the city of El Reno. Yes, turn on multi-factor authentication. Use good passwords. Stop clicking. No, you didn't win $27 million from a Nigerian prince. Ha, ha, ha. You know, we joke about that. And by now, that's passe. We all know that that's no longer a thing. 
But the idea is that we all have to be part of this solution. So this is a little bit about Omega IT, what we do, the stuff we're doing right here, right now. We're gonna keep doing, again, we're not in this for the money. We're a government entity too. We're here to help you guys protect yourselves. So, any questions? Oh, by the way, those thumb drives, you guys are all planning on going and plugging those in, right? You guys trust me? Well, let's see what happens on one of those thumb drives. So um, you plug one in and there indeed is an El Reno cybersecurity training PowerPoint file, except it's not one, it's a virus. And just to sweeten the pot, literally we call it a honey pot, I put a folder on there, I spent yesterday making up all of these, a folder on there called backup files, make it look like I left these on my personal thumb drive as I was handing them out. There's some enticing files on there. 2021 salary data, ooh, that's click worthy. Letter to CEO, strategy plan. Each and every one of these tries to open up a little thing that wants you to, to do a virus. So there's the uh, salary data one. If I do this guy, oh look, pops up this little thing and asks me to enable content. It even gives me instructions on how to do it. Now, if this had been a real virus, I'd be seconds away probably from having all my files locked, encrypted, and owing some hacker probably in Russia or North Korea a couple thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Now, thankfully, I only put a simulation on here because, well, I'm not crazy, but... And I gave one to each of you guys too. Now, I do need those back because that's part of the... Uh, part of my shtick, but trust no one.